Hello everyone, this is Brain Can channel and this episode will be in new format and we will discuss statistics because statistics this is what any researcher has to deal with and um, my guest uh, for today episode is a great expert in data science and mathematics Alexander Kiko so you can tell a bit about yourself Oh, uh, great to be here so I worked a number of years uh, with mathematical models and statistics, primarily in finance and banking, but lately in advertisements. My education is in risk management and probability theory, mm -hmm. so I have worked a fair bit with uh, statistical hypothesis uh, testing, with uh, different methodologies you can use, uh, and so on and so forth. And my latest work has dealt uh, quite explicitly with probability theory and we're getting significant results that a company can base some decisions on. Because in business, as in science, it is important to be sure that the statistical findings that you base your decisions on are actually real. Are because they? people uh, pay uh, yes. <laughs> yes, people, money people to have it. a lot of money. Yes. So, um, I actually have a couple of friends that were successful researchers, actually, but uh, they moved to data science because in data science uh, salaries are much higher than in research. Tell me why are you paid <laughs> more? <laughs> um, because we make money directly for a company and not for the grant system as most fundamental research. I suspect that is the primary reason, actually. It's not because we are smarter or because our methods are better or something like that. It's simply that the amount of money available in the industry is larger, so people get paid more. And so I can conclude about this, that if that uh, the real data uh, bring money. Yes. It's like yes. a dire direct consequence. So, and now I will explain you why I decided to uh, dedicate this episode um, to statistics. Seven years ago, uh, Nature um, published a paper about reproducibility, reproducibility problem. Um, accordingly to the survey that uh, Nature has done that year, about 70% of uh, researchers in biology cannot reproduce findings of their colleagues and approximately 60% of them cannot reproduce their previous findings. This is a crucial crisis because scientific thinking is based on the idea that if you have a finding and that uh, other people can uh, repeat or replicate this finding this indicates that this finding is true and that uh, concepts behind uh, this finding are also true. And if we cannot reproduce them, uh, we put at risk uh, research that uh, stands behind it. And uh, another paper estimated uh, costs of this irreproducibility of uh, clinical research. And this uh, cost is approximately 28 billion dollars per year. So, and this is altogether, it has a great impact on uh, um, clinical and medical research because it means that many of studies that people uh, make every year, uh, they do not lead to real improvement in uh, patients. And uh, many things uh, can hide, uh, hide behind uh, this uh, picture. I'm not going to talk about uh, different methodologies that are difficult uh, to translate. I'm not going to uh, talk about variability in biology. What we will talk uh, about is statistics, because any researcher deals with it. And um, this is quite a subtle method because uh, many things in statistics based on assumptions, right? Yes. And if you want, you can manipulate with these assumptions to overfit your data and to fit your data to the hypothesis that you initially had. And in this situation, 
this is already could be absolutely dip, a different picture so based on what I've just told what is uh, statistical significance okay so statistical significance very basically is our confidence that the results we get in an experiment or the results we see in the data set are an actual finding and not just a consequence of randomness because you can understand that whatever result you're looking for you can just get it randomly with some small probability you can uh, you can throw a coin mm -hmm. 10 times and it can come up heads every time just mm -hmm. very rarely so in science and in business we need to be sure that what we see is with some very high level of confidence not random and statistical significance tell us us that how so uh, this, <laughs> yeah how does it tell uh, yeah this gets a bit more difficult because the way people think about statistics uh, normally is that you have a hypothesis and you try to prove it and you prove it with some probability that is actually not how things work in science or in statistics so uh, you cannot prove a hypothesis mm -hmm. stati with statistics you can only reject one so the way scientists work and the way data scientists work is we have a hypothesis let's say that men are taller on average than women and we try to disprove the opposite of that so uh, the opposite hypothesis would be that uh, men are the same height as women or actually the same all over height mm -hmm. uh, so we take our data we assume a certain distribution that let's say uh, the height is normally distributed and we try to see how improbable is the data we get given this opposite hypothesis so in this case we would get much larger average heights for women than for men and the probability that the sample of men we got was just randomly taller than the sample of women we got would be very low for a reasonably sized sample like in the hundreds and based on that we would be able to see that we have quite probably have found something and it's not just random noise so this is how all uh, hypothesis disproving functions in science you assume the opposite and try to disprove it mm -hmm. and if you cannot and if you can disprove the opposite then you have probably found something uh, how can I correctly distinguish noise in my data from not noise uh, so <laughs> this is a difficult topic and yeah it sounds like very easy but this is actually not uh, easy at all yeah you understand that you need uh, some sort of empirical threshold to mm -hmm. separate the noise from your findings so in economics we usually say that if we are if we have the statistical significance of 0 0.95 mm -hmm. so 95 percent then that is good enough to publish a scientific paper probably if everything was done correctly in uh, in uh, in stem fields and physics and everything the threshold is normally much higher something like 99.99 percent in order to be sure that whatever you have isn't nonsense this depends uh, partially on uh, how expensive it is to get samples when mm -hmm. when getting samples is very expensive s scientists and in business also we normally say okay we can go with a little lower Low confidence uh, threshold yeah very dangerous path uh, yes. but um, speaking about this threshold uh, if we are looking for a very small tiny but still very important difference for example if we talk about improvements uh, a new treatment generally this is subtle very little differences but still they have a great impact on uh, patient life in this case how can we choose the better threshold does it uh, relate is it related somehow with uh, the sample size yes of and course. the problem that we are studying yes of course i mean that is actually the question 
There three questions. Are, yeah, three <laughs> questions, <laughs> yes. So there is no one answer because it depends on how large the difference is that you mm -hmm. suspect is there. Mm -hmm. It depends on how expensive it is to run the trial or run the experiment, how, how much each sample costs, because you may simply be constrained by financial resources. But okay, let's take an ideal situation. Everything is free. Yes, everything is free and we are looking for a... Very small difference. Uh, yes, and we want to be as much correct as we could. Yes, yeah, so there are various uh, empirical solutions to this. Uh, normally, if you're looking for small differences, you need thousands of samples in order to be reasonably sure that you have found something. So useful. people who are working on a shortage of uh, animals in experiments, think about it. We need thousands. Yeah, you can, you can suspect that, begin to suspect that you got something useful with a small sample, but in order to have a strong result that you are confident in, um, you normally need large sample sizes or very large differences you're looking for. Mm -hmm. So, yes, uh, could you please uh, specify about this link between differences in, the, in some parameter that we are looking at? And... Uh, the sample size. So. Sure, it's very simple. So if you are <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you are looking, uh, if you are looking for something very small, like for some reason you suspect that people with red hair make more money <laughs> in academic jobs, slightly more. Slightly more. Then you would get because whatever, good luck. You will have, uh, you will need very large sample size to detect this. But if, you're, but if you suddenly woke up one day and decided to test uh, if uh, a 30 year old adult man can uh, weigh more than a two year old child, then you would need a very small sample size because the difference you are suspecting is like uh, 10 times the weight mm -hmm. between them. So for, very, so for very large differences, normally you can get by with dozens of samples. That is, not, uh, that is not a problem. But for very small differences, you normally either need to be very creative to mm -hmm. somehow increase them, like subsample, where you suspect they are the, the strongest. And yes, that this is, is my next question. Yes, uh, because again, this is quite often a problem in reality that we have to deal with small samples. What can we do in this case? So, I mean, the best answer that people would give you in the university is just get more samples, yes. like find somewhere a lot of money and people. Find and funding, yes. Find, find more funding, yes. Uh, unfortunately, that is often not available, uh, <laughs> as you know. So uh, what you can do is you can uh, make your sampling not as random as it should be purely theoretically. You can have a hypothesis where the differences are the largest and not mm -hmm. have, for example, a representative uh, population that represents the larger population in your country or something, but pick the specific people where you expect the effect to be the strongest. And then you can use uh, basically statistical tricks in order to extrapolate your findings onto the mm -hmm. wider population. Mm -hmm. So that is also possible. This is called the... Uh, broadly speaking, the class imbalance problem in, in statistics. We try to get as much data as possible for rare mm -hmm. uh, and significant things, and we don't need as much data for common place results and uh, mm -hmm. findings. So you can, uh, when you run your experiment, you can change the balance between classes relative to what is in the real world, mm -hmm. and then you can adjust it mathematically back Mm -hmm. to what you find in the real world. Of course, you introduce more uncertainty. If everything is free, it's better to just get more samples, but mm -hmm. things aren't free. About uncertainty, uh, I heard about uh, p-value hu hunting. So could you please tell me what is oh, it? P-value hunting has little to do with uncertainty. It's more just a very bad academic practice. So, but still uh, very common because yes. I admit it in papers. Quite yes, often. It's, it's very easy to explain with an example. Uh, let's say I'm trying to prove that I have an unfair coin. So mm -hmm. it uh, comes up heads, let's say more than tails. So a fair thing to do this would be to just throw a coin 10 times, see if the number is near 5 or not, mm -hmm. and based on that make the conclusion. 
But what I can do if I really, really want to get the result, I can throw the coin 10 times and I can run this experiment 10 times. And one of those 10 will probably be quite extreme. Mm -hmm. And then I just put that into my paper and forget about the other nine experiments I ran. I just, so, what, so this is an exaggerated mm -hmm. example. In science, people normally do a different thing, which is equivalent. Mm -hmm. Like you suspect that something causes an illness mm -hmm. and you have like 20 factors and you check the statistical significance of each of these factors independently and then you just pick one you found and don't mention the other 19 and uh, the fair way to do this is that you need a much higher statistical significance if you run multiple independent checks mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you need a lot more samples to, to have the same confidence in your results but what you can do as an unscrupulous uh, scientist unscrupulous you can just do this. We found a core of lie, <laughs> <laughs> scientific lie. <laughs> I think some of people do it unconsciously because um, they think if, if, they, uh, if they got a, a bad result or result that they didn't expect that uh, probably something wrong with their uh, methods or with, I don't know, their practical skills probably. But it happened it happened in science that great discoveries uh, uh, came from really unexpected uh, sites. So I, I ask anybody <laughs> working in science, before you throw something that you think that it is not uh, that you expect it or that it uh, doesn't uh, fit your initial hypothesis, don't do it because probably very basic and still unknown things uh, could be hidden in this uh, data. Yes. You can always, you can, you can include it and then in discussion you can uh, explain or at least uh, you can try to explain uh, causes of these um, points. But they are still uh, very important and remember Negative result is also result. Yes, when throwing away, throwing away data should be done explicitly with explanation why it is done. Because when you throw away valid data non-randomly, this is how you end up with uh, irreproducible, yes, crazy, exactly. crazy results. <laughs> yes. And it's very common. Like I come from economics and it is a lot of people simply don't understand how statistics work. Like they, mm -hmm. they really do not understand that you cannot run 30 independent experiments to prove your one hypothesis, then pick the one experiments which looks nice and mm -hmm. just forget about the rest. That This is the wrong way to do statistics. Yes. So. And to do science in, uh, science in general. Yeah. Because remember, again, if we are looking at very subtle, at very uh, simple things and mechanisms that uh, are not... Um, known yet we can find something important in things that we don't understand and that we don't uh, consider as important and just throw it so do not throw your data explain it yes. I think this is a perfect uh, point to finish thank you Alex for this great talk always a pleasure <laughs>